Hi! In this video we're using Substance 3D Designer to create snow drift and explore different smoothing techniques. Let's go over the keynotes and parameters we'll use first. A non-uniform blur grayscale node is a high quality blur where the intensity is driven by a custom input mask. Intensity is the maximum strength of the blur. It's masked by the blur map. Angle adjusts the directionality of the blur effect. The amount of samples determines the quality of the blur. The histogram select node is great to set the grayscale value middle point position and select the range around it. Position sets the middle position where the range selection happens. Range is the width of the selection range. Adjust the contrast of the selection. Height Blend node combines two height maps as if they are 3D planes and also returns a black and white mask for the blend. Height Offset is used to offset height maps by moving the blend level along the height axis. The Curvature Smooth node converts a normal map to white tints for convex areas and black tints for concave parts. Let's build this basic snowdrift setup together. You can then use it as starting point for more complex ones. As base snow noise we use a Clouds 2 node. We connect it to an Auto Levels node for a full 0 to 1 range. Let's continue with a Blur HQ Grayscale node with an intensity of 5. To inflate shapes we use a Slow Blur Grayscale node with itself. Increase the samples to 20 and tweak the intensity to 0.8. Then we connect it to a directional warp node for details and use the auto levels output as intensity input. Let's push the intensity to 50 and tweak the angle to minus 135. To select darker areas we use a histogram select node, tweak the position to 0.03 and range to 0.82. For more directionality we continue with a non-uniform blur grayscale node and use the histogram select output as blur map. Let's tweak the angle to 50, increase the samples to 16 and reduce the blades to 1. To tighten the direction we use a directional warp node with an intensity of 30 and the same angle like before. A slow blur grayscale helps to shrink and tighten the shapes more. Let's increase the samples to 32 for a smooth look and the intensity to minus 1. Then we forward it into a directional warp node. For more directional details we start with a crystal 2 node and connect it to a safe transform grayscale node with a rotation of 135 to match the directionality. We use it as intensity input of the directional warp node with an angle of 50. Let's join it to a non-uniform blur grayscale node. For the sharp edges mask we use a high pass grayscale node with a radius of 2.5. To select the edges a histogram select node is perfect. We tweak the position to 0.67 and use a range of 0.25. A contrast of 0.6 works great for a smooth transition. Let's blur it slightly with an intensity of 2. We connect it to the intensity input of the non-uniform blur and tweak the intensity to 4 to smooth out the sharp edges. To get final smaller details we continue with a multidirectional warp grayscale and use a clouds 2 node as intensity input. An intensity of 2 in combination with the chain mode results in nice details. Finally we use a blur HQ grayscale node with an intensity of 0.3 to smooth it out slightly. Here's our final base result of the setup we did before. You can save this setup and use it in another project or make a custom node out of it. Let's do a small recap of the most important techniques so far. Using a slow blur with the same map twice is great to inflate shapes. A directional warp node is great to introduce directional details and in combination with a non-uniform blur it results in a nice directionality. Using a directional warp node with the same directionality helps to tighten the direction. Another slow blur with negative values helps to shrink and tighten the shapes more. A high pass and a histogram select node is perfect to get the mask of the sharper edges. Use this mask with a non-uniform blur node to soften those edges. 
Let's explore a method to smooth some areas, but keep details in others. As input you can use whatever noise you want. It works great with directional noises and also gives you very nice detail with other noises. To get the convex and concave areas I use a normal and a curvature smooth node. A histogram select node is perfect to select the range to smooth. Here you can experiment with other methods too. It really depends which areas you want to smooth. I use different blur intensities and non-uniform blur nodes to smooth out the surface with different strength, which results in smoother transitions. Then I blend them together with a height blend node. Offset and contrast are great to tweak the transition area. I finally use a slow blur node to deflate shapes and detail with the min mode. It results in beautiful details and with different modes and positive or negative values you have a lot of controls for the final look. If you want to learn more you can download and open the graphs shown in the video. Thanks for watching and we would love to hear your thoughts, ideas and suggestions for future quick tips. So let us know them in the comments. See you in the next quick tip episode.